Here's the second video of my mini series on strong dividend picks for this year. In this one is about a media company that has a very good dividend distribution track record, a strong business with a huge moat and is available for a more than fair price. When you live outside of Europe, you may not have heard of RTL yet, but they are also in business in the US, England and many other non-European countries. So bear with me, it will be worth your while to extend your investing horizon a bit. Please also read the disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor and obviously won't take over any responsibility for your financial actions. RTL is the abbreviation of Radio Television Luxembourg and is in Germany best known for their TV channel with the same name. It was actually one of the first private television stations in Germany when it started their program in January 1984. Since then the RTL group grew a lot and today owns or partially owns and operates 67 TV channels, 10 streaming platforms, 38 radio stations, a global business for content production and distribution and digital video networks in several European countries. Today they belong to the leading European companies in media, broadcasting and content creation. RTL generates about 6 billion euros per year with their 16,000 employees in 30 countries worldwide. That's in a nutshell what RTL's business is. So drumroll, how much do they distribute in dividends? In 2021 RTL paid 3 euro per stock in dividends to their shareholders. This is a yield of 6% on the current share price of about 50 euro. One important thing to note is that the dividend payment is subject to a 15% tax deduction of the state of Luxembourg. Therefore the actually distributed dividend is only 2.55 euro if you do not belong to one of the exceptions. I'm including a link in the box below the video to a paper that states the regulations on who will be exempt from the tax payment. The dividends are paid one time per year as usual in Germany. The dividend history is very stable with the exemption of the first corona year 2020. RTL distributes continuously massive amounts of dividends and occasionally even distributed special dividends that raised the dividend payment in some years. In the past 10 years the RTL group distributed 51 euro in dividends accumulated. This is a bit more than today's stock price of about 50 euro. The policy on dividends is very shareholder friendly. They plan to pay out at least 80% of the adjusted full year net result. 6% is a pretty good dividend return. After the 15% Luxembourg tax it is still a yield of more than 5% on the current stock price. Let's look at the free cash flow if the money is generated sustainably or if they are tapping into their reserves. RTL generated consistently very high free cash flows for its owners in the past decade. They fluctuated but on a high level. To give you a feeling on how much this actually is, I put the generated free cash flow in relation to the revenue. What this percentage figure tells you is how much of the revenues will in the end of the day remain for its owners. Or in other words, a figure of 10% means that 10 cent of every dollar or euro made in sales will be generated for the owners. With having the 80% distribution policy in mind, I personally expect either additional increases of the dividend distributions, special dividend payments or investments in further growth. The cash flow is pretty strong. Is the asset and debt situation also supporting this positive view of the financials? I don't see RTL as an equity play. This is why I will refrain from looking into all the bits and pieces. But we need to make sure that there are no bigger risks in the balance. Therefore we will make a quick analysis and apply a bit more safety to the individual items to make sure we are covered. We take the current assets as they are with 3.9 million euro. If you've already seen analysis videos of me, you know that I'm usually very careful with intangible assets. Program rights are part of the current assets and they are also intangible. But I'm making an exception here and also include them entirely in the calculation as they are tradable and belong to the core of a media company's business. We take the goodwill and the other intangible assets out of the non-current assets and deduct another 20% safety from the rest. The resulting 1.2 million euro are added to the current assets so that we have 5.15 million euro as total assets. 
We deduct the current and the non-current liabilities of that and receive our calculated shareholders equity of 670 million euro. The shareholders equity in the balance sheet is significantly higher. The delta will be a part of the margin of safety in our value calculation later. To make sure that we are not stepping into a value trap, we need to understand the big risks of the business. Or in other words, why is the stock price so low in comparison to the free cash flow? The major concern is probably the lack of growth in the past 10 years. Even if you take out the slump of the corona year 2020, RTL grew their revenues between 2009 and 2019 just by 29% in total or 2.5% annually on average. The second risk is the change of the whole media industry to digital based offerings. The digital business of the RTL group is contributing about 18% to the overall revenues. This is certainly not enough to compete in the digital era, but they recognized this problem and addressed it strategically. Both items actually offer a lot of potential and chances that we will discuss a bit later in this video. There is one more concern in the ownership structure, but this concern is in my opinion only making the shares less interesting for institutional investors, but even more interesting for smaller investors. The majority of more than 76% of the shares belongs to the German-based media giant Bertelsmann. They own their stakes in RTL already since more than 35 years and grew their business to where it is today. With the size of their engagement, it is of course clear that Bertelsmann is having the final say at RTL. For active institutional investors who are used to influence the companies they are invested in, this is obviously problematic. For smaller investors, a long-term strategic owner like Bertelsmann, whose own business depends very much on the cash flows it receives from RTL, is of course a source of stability. Isn't there a risk that Bertelsmann will try to take over RTL completely and squeeze out the remaining smaller investors? I don't think that this is a significant risk in the foreseeable future because of two reasons. Number one, Bertelsmann needs the capital to invest in digital growth and the transformation of the media industry. RTL is just one of eight Bertelsmann divisions and they have to transform also the other divisions to the age of online media business. Number two, Bertelsmann actually already tried to take over RTL entirely. In 2007, they considered to acquire the whole company and already owned more than 90% of the shares. But they pulled back due to a missing reliable legal basis for a 100% takeover. In consequence, they reduced their stake again and own today about 76%. Considering these three major risks, what is protecting the business? What is RTL doing strategically to speed up growth and digital transformation? And what can we expect for the next 5 to 10 years? The RTL group is actually based on several columns. Apart from the stable TV, radio and the connected advertising business, they also own a content production and distribution business called Fremantle. It is operating globally in more than 30 countries and contributes about 25% to the total revenue of RTL. You probably know their TV shows like American Idol or Pop Idol, America's Got Talent, Britain's Got Talent, The X Factor, Family Feud, Project Runway, etc. They do not only produce for TV but also for digital entertainment networks like Netflix and operate more than 360 YouTube channels. RTL plans to double Fremantle's global revenues until 2025 to 3 billion euro via organic growth and mergers and acquisitions. Then they are working on the growth of their streaming business that they want to grow from 3 million paying subscribers in 2021 to 10 million subscribers in 2026 with a revenue contribution of 1 billion euro. The growth rate seems to be on track as they increased their subscriber base from 2020 to 2021 already by 72% from about 1.8 million to 3 million paying customers. 
On top of that, they are strengthening their core business. For 230 million euro, RTL just recently acquired the German media house Gruner and Jahr to form a cross media champion that is supposed to boost the streaming service and create run rate synergies of about 100 million euro until 2025. These strategic initiatives go all in the right direction. But what should we expect in terms of the future growth rate of the business? The average annual 2.5% growth of the past decade is obviously far away from being stellar. And although I believe that the strategic initiatives could provide a lot of growth in the next 5 to 10 years, and they certainly have the cash to finance their growth, a business is not suddenly going to change its pace entirely. So, RTL is probably not going to grow with 15 or 20% on average in the next decade. For my calculation, I assume a growth rate of 5% annually, which is a bit faster than in the past, but still quite careful considering the growth plans. The most important question is if RTL is actually worth its price. Let's try to figure this out by using the results of our analysis for the value calculation. We put the assumed growth rate of 5% and the 2021 free cash flow of 740 million euro into my company evaluation spreadsheet that you can download for free from my website if you like. The sheet calculates the assumed future free cash flow and discounts it to today. We put in our calculated shareholders equity of 670 million euro and receive a total present value of 7.5 billion euro for the RTL group. When we put in the number of 153 million stocks outstanding, we receive a value per stock of around 49 euro. Last time I checked, a share of RTL had a price of about 50 euro. So the stock is currently being traded around its intrinsic value. A margin of safety for potential errors in our calculations is not included in the current stock price. But we have another margin of safety of about 3 billion euro from the goodwill and the intangibles that is not yet included in our calculation and that would increase the value by additional 19 euro per stock. What's also worth to mention is that the discount rate already includes a desired return on our investment of 8% per year. In total, the stock price seems to be very fair, but not dirt cheap. In a nutshell, RTL is a strong and well-positioned business, generating consistently high free cash flow and distributing regularly attractive dividends that are well covered by the generated cash. RTL might be in the middle of a major industry change, but considering their market position, their strategic initiatives to grow and their ability to finance this growth out of their own pocket, I believe you receive a lot of value for the price you pay for a stock. If you haven't seen the first video on the top 2022 dividend stocks about the company Walgreens, an extremely well positioned business, you can click right here to watch it. And the third video of this mini video series is going to be linked right here below as soon as it is released. See ya.